Did you end up eating the log pizza? Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Ask Me Anything or Viewer Mail or whatever I'm calling it this time because I don't know what to call this except it's Eric talking to you through the camera. That happens often uh, a couple times a week usually. But anyway, welcome back. I got a couple of questions I asked on our Facebook page. People had some questions I asked on Twitter and on YouTube and I got a list of them here and I picked some out and I thought I'll answer them for you and then after that some videos that I like right now made by some other people that I want to share with you. Okay, ready? Will asks, has there ever been a Garden Fork project that went so bad you scrapped the footage and never made it? All the time, just completely all the time. Uh, I just, sometimes what I run into is I want to do something in the house or the yard and I'm like, no, no, I want to make a video about that so I'm not going to work on it right now. And then all the projects get backed up. So yes, there are multiple projects that don't go well and, I'm, and I just kind of bail on making the video. And then sometimes I revisit that and that is actually happening last weekend and this weekend. Uh, I'm making a standalone sugar feeder for the bee yard and I made one based on this other fellow's design and it didn't seem to work right um, and I think I know how to fix it but I, I just kind of gave up. I was just like, that's it. And you know, sometimes you're tired and I've learned that when I'm tired, I stop working because that's when I make the mistakes. Uh, I'm very careful about not posting anything on the internet after about six o'clock at night because that's, I think, when a lot of people get themselves in trouble. They're just like, it doesn't work out. Sherry from Flannel Acres, who has a YouTube channel that's a lot of fun. If you like uh, garden forky stuff, check out her show. I'll link to it in the show notes here. But Sherry asks, did you end up eating the log pizza? And what she's referring to is we have a portable pizza oven video. It's a brick dry fit pizza oven that I'm going to improve on this year. New video coming out. And in one of the how-to videos, we had the log incident. All right, we're going to time to turn this. Oh, man. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're having birch pizza. <laughs> Bad, bad log. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, so uh, the charcoal notwithstanding, that looks pretty good. And yeah, I did eat it because I rolled the log back off. And here's my thinking on eating burnt wood. It's cellulose. It's plant material. It's kind of like, I mean, some things we burn and eat and it's good. So I just kind of brushed off the ash and ate the pizza. It had a little bit of a charcoal -y taste, but people actually will ingest charcoal uh, for their, um, I think it, it can be a cleansing agent maybe. I don't know. One of you will tell me what charcoal is for when you swallow it in the show notes here below. But yeah, I ate that pizza and it was good. I mean, you have to embrace mistakes. I, if it's done perfect, I think there wasn't any learning there. Um, I am full of mistakes. I make them all the time. You know, like yesterday, I had to cut into the existing trim to put in this new door trim. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but there was a wall and then the turns and I had to drop the door. The trim, door trim has to go all the way to the ground, the floor, and the baseboard trim was in the way. So I started to get out my little oscillating saw, those little oscillating cutters, and I burnt out three blades, which are really expensive. And then I realized I could just pop the baseboard off the wall, cut it with my chop saw, and put it back in. This is after I burnt out three of these blades, which are like eight or nine bucks a piece. So there you go. Rita asks, if I have a beehive and the honey hasn't been taken from it in the past couple of years, will the honey inside still be fine? Yes, I think so. Uh, they have said that they have sampled honey from Egyptian times that they find in the tubes and it is still edible. Edible honey has a very long shelf life. You know, if it smells funky or if it has mold on it pulling the frames out, uh, you do not want to go near it. But also just be careful about how much honey you're taking out of the hive, especially in the spring when bees actually need a lot of food. Like right now it's warm out, but there aren't really any flowers out and they need a food source. So they're going to use that honey that they've stored. We have a video about seed starting. We have a number of them, but I made a new one just to kind of touch on some points. And Betsy asks, how much do you water your seeds? How do you know if you're overwatering them? 
if there's moss growing on the seed starting mix, you're definitely overwatering them. It's a real tricky thing. I think it's better to air on slightly dry seed starting mix than too wet. If it's too wet and you're in a warm environment, you're going to invite funguses and molds. And on a new seedling, there are a couple of funguses that'll just lay those seedlings flat and it's a bad thing. So a damp sponge, if that. There's a, a bunch of new little seed starting trays that have a little capillary matting and you fill up the water tray and it wicks it up into the soil. Those do a pretty good job. I usually don't put, they have like a little plastic humidor cover over them. And a lot of the times I don't do that. Beth on YouTube asks, I have a question. What do you fill your raised beds with? Growing vegetables is not new to me, but having poor soil has given me trouble in the past. I'm trying a raised bed garden this year and don't know what to fill it with. I would just like to know. Lasagna gardening is perfect for raised beds. Naturally, we have a video about that. I was over at Brian, my buddy Brian's house last year. We built him some raised beds out of reclaimed lumber. Uh, there's a lot of renovation going on around here. We just got some lumber out of a dumpster. And we used a layering method with cardboard and grass and hay and compost and soil and manure. And those raised garden beds are going like crazy. It seems like kind of a funky, will this work kind of method. And it does. You can incorporate the existing soil you have in there as well. But it's a great way to improve upon soil or start with nothing and build up to something. It works really well. So lasagna gardening and a raised bed, the way to go. Hey, real quick, are you on the Garden Fork email list? I send out at least one email a week. I'm gonna be trying to do two a week, just kind of updating you about new videos, new stuff on the site, pictures of the Labradors, where my head's at, you know, your typical Garden Fork thing. If you would consider being part of our email list, you can join for free. There's a button right down, not a button, a link right down here, and I think there's a little white button up here. It'll say, join our email list if you like. Just considering. Couple of YouTube channels I really like. Um, the first one, the guy's name, his YouTube channel name is Bus Vlogger. He has a VW bus and he is a vlogger. He lives in Arkansas and I just like his outlook on life. Um, some how-to projects there, some homesteady projects as well. They have goats, they have a pig that lives indoors with them. Interesting, a uh, very sweet pig. And just his kind of outlook on life and I, it just, I think he has a really good personality and the YouTube channel just, I find it entertaining and he makes you kind of think about stuff as well. There's a Garden Fork viewer who goes by the name of Super Tramp who has built his own tiny house, which I'm blown away by, and he made a tour of his tiny house for you all. So it's on his page on YouTube, I'll link in the show notes here, but it was kind of neat to see what he did, why he did it, and it's just got me thinking more and more that I just have too much space and too much stuff and it'd be really nice to downsize. Solar panels and propane and he has a, um, does he have propane? Yes, for the hot water heater. And he has a wood stove in there and he made a really nice video and I appreciate him taking the time to do that. He's also going to be on the Garden Fork Radio podcast soon as well. You can listen to that in iTunes or on our site. Again, a link to the podcast show is in the show notes here. And then our last video that I like is by Will. Um, Will and I have been corresponding a lot. It's called, his show's called The Weekend Homestead. And we did what I call, uh, I don't know what you call it, grilling steak right on charcoal. And he, I think he calls it extreme grilling, but he did the same thing to see if it would work. And you can see what happened there on his channel. Again, that's linked in the show notes below. <coughs> Thanks for watching. Any more questions or comments below? Are you going to bark at me again? If you want to check out our iTunes podcast, the link is below. And check out our email newsletter. Easy to sign up. It's free to join. I send stuff out once or twice a week. Good to hear from you. They're not very animated, are they?